And we've got Randall, my friend Randall here too. Yes, I am uh, just as excited in being here. Again, I'm an admissions counselor as well. We're gonna be joined by uh, professors, uh, people from our student affairs team, some students. We have a couple presentations, we have a couple of videos. So you're gonna hear all about AP today. But thank you so much for logging on this wonderful Saturday morning. Um, we're just gonna wait a couple of minutes to make sure everyone um, logs on and we'll get started with, uh, with a couple of presentations today. Yes, we're so excited for you guys to be here. Um, Randall and I both graduated from APU as well. So I graduated in 2018 with a degree in kinesiology. Loved it, loved my time in academics at APU and also got to be involved in some really cool leadership opportunities at APU too. So love all the resources that were available to me as a student, not just throughout academics, but also in regards to my development as a whole student. So that's when I graduated from APU. Randall, I know you graduated from APU too. When I did, did you graduate? yes. Last year, 2019, I graduated with my bachelor's in fine arts in uh, cinematic arts production. So um, we'll actually be hearing from a professor from the cinematic arts department today. But um, if you do have any questions throughout the event, feel free to send a chat in the Q&A. Um, we will be saving some space during the presentation, uh, sorry, during the panels for some Q&A with our professors, student affairs, our uh, students. And also we have two other missions counselors on the chat today answering questions throughout the day. So please feel free to send in your questions through the Q&A. Um, we will be answering those either um, in person through the platform or through the chat. Yes, yeah, we're so excited to be able to get to your questions. This is what this event is for, right? Ultimately to hopefully answer any and all questions that you all might have about APU, whether you would be an incoming first time freshman, maybe you're a senior in high school right now, and you are in the midst right now of the application and admission process. So maybe you're a senior and you have some questions about what a first time freshman's experience looks like, or maybe you're a transfer student and you're thinking about transferring into APU and are wondering what community life looks like for you as a transfer student. Maybe you wanna live on campus. Maybe you wanna to commute to campus. Um, there are a lot of different students that we get to serve at APU. And so we wanna make sure that your questions get answered. So please shoot those questions in the Q&A box. Um, we can't answer them if you don't ask. So ask any and all things that you might be thinking about. And like Randall said, we'll be able to talk with some faculty as well as some student life staff and some students as well. I think that's so exciting that we get to hear from current students at APU and about their current experience at APU. So yeah, we're really excited. Definitely, I'd love to be able to share my own experience with the APU and just share so many, so many great stories that you're gonna hear today. And in case we're not able to answer your questions today, definitely feel free to get, uh, get in touch with our UG admissions office. We'll definitely get you connected with one of our admissions counselors. We can talk more in detail um, specifically to any additional questions you have after today's event, but we'll be sharing all those links throughout the event and right at the end, just to make sure you have all of our contact info. But let's go ahead yes. and get started with today's event. Awesome. Yeah, so to kind of kickstart our event, we are actually going to watch a video from a previous student at APU. So we're gonna hear a little bit about Timothy G and his experience at APU. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Hi, my name is Tolu Noah. Ooh, so sorry, that's Dr. Noah. <laughs> she is also incredible. We will hear from Dr. Noah as well, but first let's hear from Timothy. My name is Timothy G. I'm an allied health major and I'm a senior. One of the most memorable moments for me was when I went on my admissions trip on an action team to the Himalayas. My team and I, we went to this town and every night around seven o'clock in the town square, all these people would gather and they would just start dancing. And we had no idea what the language was. We couldn't really communicate with them, but we engaged and we just participated in this act of dancing and really, you know, no words were exchanged, but I felt such a sense of hospitality and community there. And there's something about that that, that event and that interaction that really was nonverbal, that really helped me understand how helping people or even connecting with people doesn't necessitate words. It just requires you to be present. And for me, being an allied health major on my path to becoming a PA, a physician assistant, that interaction was just an analogy for hopefully what I'll be able to do, connecting with people despite 
the lack of words. Very well spoken. I actually had the chance to, to attend APU with Timothy G. So I've been able to hear his own story, but that is just the first story you're going to hear throughout today's event. So I'm going to go ahead and take the mic and present to you our first presentation of the day. So let me go ahead and share my screen and I'll tell you why APU. We're going to talk about the investment and why specifically APU can support you in your career. Awesome. There you go. So why APU? Uh, when you look at uh, different colleges, uh, you want, really want to look at that return on investment. So in higher education, these are the four main factors. You're going to want to pay attention to affordability, employability, diversity, and the academic reputation. So first, let's focus on affordability and let's talk about sticker price. So keep this term in mind, sticker price. I'll talk about it again in another presentation later in today's event, but essentially you see the sticker price and you think this is what I'm paying for college. In reality, that is not what you're paying for college. The sticker price is just every cost. This includes tuition, housing. This includes um, an essential part textbooks, class fees, all these different fees, but this is before applying your scholarships, your loans, your grants, and other financial aid. The most fantastic thing about APU is that 100% of our students receive financial aid. So no matter what your family's income level is, you will be receiving some sort of financial aid, either from the institution or the federal government. So next we have the true cost of attendance. So again, pay attention to the sticker price and the true cost of attendance. The true cost is after applying those things I just mentioned, like the scholarships, like those grants and those loans. Our true cost of attendance is lower than other schools. And you can see that on the right-hand side, compared to other private colleges within the nation, we are significantly lower in terms of our true cost. That, and we have some of the highest scholarships among private colleges. We wanna make sure we are bridging that financial gap and that we are offering plenty of scholarships, either through AP's academic scholarship, through our MEL scholarship, through all these different opportunities through your own major and through these different programs. We offer some of the highest scholarships among private colleges in California. Uh, next, almost half or a little over half of our income student, incoming students receive that APU grant. This APU grant is on top of that 100%, not a separate category. So this is an additional form of need given to you by the institution uh, in response to your FAFSA. So we'll talk a little bit more about, on what the FAFSA is later in today's event. But again, a little more than half of our students receive that additional grant on top of that 100% that receive financial aid. And finally, we graduate with less student loans compared to the national average. So again, take a look on the right. We graduate with a bit less loans than the national average. We want to make sure that you are also financially set once you graduate APU and start your field in whether that's medicine, uh, film, business, communication, psychology, you will be graduating with less student loans than the national average. The next, let's take a look at some rates. So on the left, you're going to see our graduation rate compared to the Cal States. So we do have a higher graduation rate within a specific amount of time compared to those Cal States at 68% versus 57%, 57%, excuse me. And then on the right side, you're gonna see the retention rate. So this is how many students wanna stay and continue the education with APU after their freshman year. So compared to the national average, we're at 85%. So students enjoy their education at APU. They are developing professionally, they're developing spiritually, emotionally. Students are enjoying their education at APU and we wanna make sure that we're giving back into them through that return on investment. Next, let's focus on employability. So in the class of 2019, just last year, you're gonna find that 86% of students found work or are continuing their education. So not only are we committed to helping you find a job and getting a job, but we want you to get a job right after college. And I can happily say I was part of the class of 2019. I both found a job and started my master's degree right after college. So I'm part of the 86% and I can definitely say APU has very much prepared me to enter the field of working in, in my own industry and here as an admissions counselor and continuing my education right now and getting my master's in business management and marketing. So I'm super excited for that. But AP has definitely prepared me and able to network and able to find internships. My professor helped me one on one in finding internships throughout my time at APU. And we definitely have a career center, which I'll talk about in just a moment, that will help you get those networking opportunities. So during APU, what, what can you do to practice for employability? Well, first, 
students can gain work experience from 2,000 plus on-campus jobs. This is everything from working at the Starbucks like you see on screen, uh, working in the libraries, working as an administrative assistant, working in the School of Music. We have 2,000 plus available on-campus jobs and every single one of those jobs is federal work study eligible. So we wanna make sure students are gaining experience and that they're beefing up their resume with these different opportunities to work on campus. Uh, next, like I mentioned, we have a career center. They serve students before, during, and after the college experience. So you don't need to be attending APU in order to receive the aid that a career center offers, but we wanna make sure that you're feeling prepared before starting your time at APU and even afterwards. We have alumni coming back to the career center saying, hey, I want a little check up on my resume. I wanna practice on my uh, virtual interview that's coming up soon. I need some additional help. Our career center is helping students prepare uh, in getting a job. Uh, next, we have an amazing graph on the right. AP alumni earn an average salary of $51,100 in their early career compared to the national average. So as you can see, just within two years, we're already starting at a higher salary than the national average. And moving on to six years, it's sort of that little exponential rate. Uh, you, we will be earning more. And this is where you're gonna see that return on your investment. So you're paying a lot for college, uh, maybe even not because of those additional financial aid pieces through grants and scholarships, but you're gonna see that return once you get a job right after APU. And then again, just talking into that exponential rate, we earn more over our lifetime than other schools. So really just speaking into not only getting a job right after college, but getting an excellent job. Uh, next, we're gonna shift into our third point of diversity and access. APU is a diverse community. We have students from different countries with different beliefs. Uh, we represent students from 48 different countries. We are a Hispanic serving institution and we are spiritually diverse representing 55 denominations. These are only a few key aspects of diversity that we focus on at APU, but we wanna make sure we're providing access to all of our students. We have about 9,500 total students on campus. So we have students coming in from Arizona, as far as England, uh, right here local to Los Angeles. We have students from um, a spiritually diverse background, whether someone has grown up in the church or hasn't, we wanna make sure we are providing access to every single student on campus. Um, other forms of diversity and access, uh, nearly a third of our students are first generation college students. I'm a first gen college student. My uh, parents immigrated from the Philippines right before I was born, so I fall under that one third. Uh, we have an amazing center called the Academic Success Center that want to provide opportunities for first gen students to thrive and to become leaders in their field. So nearly a third of our own students are first gen. Um, if you are a veteran or if your family member is a veteran, AP is a yellow ribbon and military friendly school and we're among the top 20 colleges for veterans in California. We have another office called the Military Veterans and Benefits Affairs Office. So they will be working with student veterans and uh, spouses or children of veterans and making sure that they're receiving all sorts of excellent education. And then finally, really speaking into the Academic Success Center, they offer so many different forms of assistance, including the Office of Accessibility and Disability Resources. So they will be providing additional learning accommodations in case you need some additional help within the classroom. Again, we are wanting to make sure that we are meeting students and providing access to, to every single type of student on campus. And then finally, let's talk about our academic reputation. So these are just a few of the key, key highlights that we have at APU. 80% um, acceptance rate into grad studies and medical school. So students that wanna go into medical school, we have an amazing track called the pre-med track where they will actually prepare you to take the MCAT or maybe even the DAT if you wanna go into dental school. So 80% of our students get accepted into those amazing fields. Um, nursing program, we have uh, one of the top 10 nursing programs in the entire nation. So very competitive nursing program, but we wanna make sure our students are graduating within four or four and a half years within that program. And for the NCLEX, we have about a 95% success rate on the first time test taking. So we have a very successful program and it's very rigorous, but we wanna make sure that our nurses are successful in their fields. For any students wanting to go into acting, our acting program ranks in the top 30 in the nation. Being so close to LA, you're gonna to see tons of industry professionals coming to, uh, into Azusa Pacific and giving seminars. They're going to be teaching students. They're going to be directing these students. We have so many industry professionals just by being so close to LA. Uh, there's such a huge investment in uh, being able to have that sort of close access. If you want to go into accounting, 93% of our domestic accounting students receive job offers before graduation. So they'll actually be getting jobs before they graduate. And parents, that's probably a big green flag for you. 
So you want your student to get a job, but these students are actually getting jobs before they graduate. And then one of the last points, we have one of the top 10 best music schools in California. Again, being so close to LA, we have so many industry professionals, whether they're working at Disney, the Philharmonic, we have people working at Warner Bros. We have people from Target and JPL coming in. We have so many industry leaders coming into our school just to teach our students. Uh, next, we're an R2 doctoral university and that's ranked by the Carnegie Foundation. That uh, ranking is only given to 5% of universities in the entire nation. And that really just shows our commitment to our doctoral programs, but also our research. So especially if you wanna go into the field of psychology, for example, or into biology, we are focused on research and we are ranked as an R2 doctoral university. We've also received the community engagement classification. So we serve a collective 160,000 hours per year through our student body. So our students are committed to serving the LA area. They're committed to serving our global communities. They're committed to serving our Mexicali region. We wanna make sure we're giving back into the community through our service. Uh, next, we rank top three in Hidden Gem universities. So to be ranked as Hidden Gem essentially shows our commitment to upgrading our curriculum, to upgrading our campuses. Uh, That's ranking by our alumni and by our professors. And that ranks us in the top three among other California schools. And then finally, most recently, back in October, we were ranked in the top 25 in uh, in ranked schools by our alumni by Forbes. So that is an amazing ranking. So if anything, hear from our alumni because they, they believe in an education in APU. I can definitely say I love my time at APU. I will advocate for APU in my, and what I learned in my uh, cinematic art studies, but we've been ranked in the top 25. And among that list, we've also been ranked alongside Harvard, Yale, and Stanford University. So we are ranked with top tier universities. So in conclusion, um, uh, when you're looking at that return on investment, the big question, is AP worth, worth the investment? So first, we provide access to scholarships on financial aid to bridge that financial gap. AP, AP provides access to connections to launch their successful careers earlier in their work life. AP provides access to learning by focusing on various demographics. And AP provides access to, to success and shown by the numbers of our students' acceptance rates and job offers in those previous uh, couple of slides. That's just a quick little presentation on the investment on AP. We'll talk a little more on financial aid and a few other presentations throughout today's event, but let me go ahead and share our next video for today. So we're gonna hear from another student named Clarissa Green. My name is Clarissa Green. I am a sophomore public relations major here at APU. My first time being in my public relations class, we constantly get internship emails. And I was only a freshman, so I thought I wouldn't be able to apply for most of these internships. But there was actually this one opportunity where I was just so interested. And it was for a social media intern opportunity. And it was through the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. My professor, Ishmael Medell, was like, this is going to be the perfect opportunity for you. Please take this internship. So I took it. And through that internship, I just, I, my world has transformed. I learned the different social interactions that happen here at APU. I was able to record that and share that with others. And just being able to give that little bit of insight as to what the APU community is like, as well as our education here, is just so fantastic. And I learned that that's something that I want to do for other businesses, because I want to be able to share their stories that they have and be able to create their brands and build a, a higher reputation for themselves. I learned here at APU what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. And it's just so amazing. Awesome. Thanks so much, Randall, for sharing a little bit with us about what sets APU apart ultimately and why students love attending APU, why faculty and staff love being part of the community and relationships at APU, and just a little bit more about the fact that as a student, you are going to be set apart, right? You are going to be prepared to enter into the workforce after you graduate. You're going to be prepared for your time outside of APU as well. So thanks so much again, Randall, for sharing a little bit about that with us. Next, we're going to talk some logistics. So I'm going to talk to us a little bit about the application process and some helpful tips for you to know as you are completing the application with Azusa Pacific University. So I'm going to share my screen with us. 
and talk a little bit about your freshman experience at APU. So to jump in, there are a few important dates that I would love to make you all aware of as you are going throughout the application process. So some of these dates have already passed, which is okay. <laughs> we still wanna make sure that you get your application into APU and you know that that is still available to you. And us as your admissions counselors are still so excited to review your applications. So November 15th traditionally is our early action deadline. Really quickly in talking about early action deadline, I want to make a quick distinction. An early action deadline does not mean that this is an early decision deadline. So if you do apply by November 15th of your senior year, that does not mean that you are automatically committing to attend APU. We wanna make sure that you have all the information that you need in order to make a decision that is going to be best for you. And so this early action deadline just means that if you apply by November 15th, then you will receive your admissions decision earlier in the process, which ultimately just gets things kickstarted. So you'll receive your admissions decision early, you will receive your financial aid package early, you'll get to have conversations regarding your financial aid package really early with us as your admissions counselors. And we get so excited to have those conversations with you. So we would love if you completed your application by November 15th of your senior year. November 15th is also an important deadline for some additional programs at APU. That is the deadline for our School of Nursing as well as our trustees application as well. Our trustees application is a full tuition scholarship that is available for our high performing students. And so these are some important deadlines to keep in mind for your senior year. Next, we've got our February 15th deadline, and this is our regular decision deadline for the fall semester. June 1st is that final, final decision deadline, that final deadline for the fall semester. But we wanna make sure that you get your application in by February 15th. And again, just so that we can get you an admissions decision so that we can package your financial aid. We wanna make sure to get things kickstarted for you to hopefully relieve some stress in order for you to have some really helpful information as you're going throughout your senior year. So those are some important dates that I want us all to keep in mind as we are going throughout this application process. Next, I wanna give us some specific insight into our application here at APU. So these are the exact things that we're looking for on your application. And as your admissions counselors, we get to review your application, which that is one of my favorite parts of this job is just to learn a little bit more about who you are. And I want to encourage you that you are not just another number of a student that is applying to APU. We get to learn more about you through your application. So part of your application, you will include some general information. So your name, your address, your email address, phone number, things like that. You will also include a short personal statement from you. So again, we just wanna hear a little bit more about who you are and why APU is a school that you are interested in. So you really get to shine through this short personal statement. Next, there are a few different agreements that you will need to check on your application. So one of them are things like, as a requirement for all of our students, you will attend chapel three times a week throughout the four years that you're a student at APU. You will also, take six Bible courses throughout the time that you're a student at APU, and those are spread out through the four years that you are a student at APU, and they're really diverse in nature. So you'll get to in, um, experience some really cool classroom environments in that as well. So those are a couple of our statements of agreement that are also part of your application. And then you will also include your transcripts on your application. So part of your application is that you will list your high school counselor's email address, and we will reach out to them to receive your official transcripts. But along the way, if you have access to your unofficial transcripts, you can actually send those directly to us as your admissions counselor, and we can get them submitted for you to, again, just jumpstart your application process. So that's a little bit about what we're looking for in the application. Um, our minimum GPA requirement is a 3.0. 
and the average GPA of our students coming into APU is about a 3.7. So that's a little bit about what our students look like as they are coming into APU and some requirements about our APU specific application. As you are applying to APU, you will go to this link here, which is apu.edu backslash apply. And you will see this main page here. So you will click this red button here that says that you are starting a new application and you'll create a sign in and then you'll be able to access your application there. We will be so excited to see that you started an application with us. So you can expect regular updates from us with next steps along the way. We don't want any information to be a secret. So we want to make sure you know if you're missing something from your application or once you've completed your application, when to submit your enrollment deposit. Um, again, we just wanna make sure that no information is a secret to you. So you can expect some regular updates from us and you'll receive frequent mailings and emails with some different information. Again, just regarding some exciting events and deadlines and updates from us because we want to make sure to keep you in the loop and to keep you involved as an applicant at APU. I also just wanna say as part of this too, your admissions counselor will be a huge, huge resource to you. So we get so excited <laughs> to see that you are interested in applying in APU. So you can also expect to receive a lot of different communication pieces from us as your admissions counselors as well. Another thing I want to draw our attention to is that you are not necessarily guaranteed admission to APU if you've met these requirements. As a university, we are looking at your holistic application. So your application is not just reviewed based on the minimum requirements. So completing a GPA, completing an essay, things like that. But we wanna make sure that we, again, just understand more of who you are as a student. So if you've been involved in any extracurricular activities, such as working with your church or working in the community, working through your school, we want to know about that. And we want to know about who you are as a potential holistic student at APU, because a lot of these things are important to us as a university. We care deeply about service and our involvement in the city of Azusa, which is our home. And we'll get to hear a little bit about that in our student affairs panel a little bit later. So, as a university, we have some passions that are essential to our identity, and we want to know if that's part of who you are as well. So we want to, again, just understand holistically who you are as a student. Once you have completed your application to APU, and if you are admitted to be a student at APU, you will then receive an offer of financial aid from the university. But again, that won't happen until you have been admitted to APU. So that's a little bit more about some dates and the timeline in regards to your application and admission process. And Randall is gonna tell us about some financial aid pieces a little bit later in our time together today. Once you are admitted to APU, we are gonna be so excited for you. <laughs> um, and there is going to be a personalized web portal for everything you need to know throughout your admissions and financial aid process. So that will be on this home.apu.edu website and that main page will look like this. So you'll sign in and you'll be able to see all your resources from that home.apu.edu page. And once you are excited to come to APU, once you've decided that that is where you are going to call your home for the next potentially four years, you will submit an enrollment deposit to APU. So that deposit is due by May 1st, and that is a $300 enrollment deposit. And this will secure your spot at APU. You will get kickstarted to begin your housing application. So if you are a local student, if you live within about 30 miles of APU and you live with a family member, you can commute to campus. That is absolutely a resource for you. And we have an entire office on campus that is dedicated to our commuter students because we wanna make sure that you understand that APU still belongs to you just as much as it does to our students who live on campus. And so in the spring, you will submit that application to be a commuter student, or if you are living on campus, then you will complete a housing application where you can list different pre preferences 
in ranking, ranking our dorm buildings and you'll complete some different information about who you are. So are you an early bird? Are you a night owl? Do you listen to music when you do your homework? Things like that. So we can just know a little bit more about you and hopefully pair you with somebody who is compatible to you as a roommate at APU. And then finally, you will get to register for a summer orientation event, which ultimately just gets you prepared to be a student at APU and to get you excited about what that transition will look like as you make a really big decision for your future. So these are some things that happen once you are admitted to be a student at APU. One of my favorite, favorite events that happens on campus once you are admitted to APU and once you've decided that APU is where you're gonna call home, we have this event here, which is called Candela. And this ceremony is beautiful and it is led by the president of our university and he paints this beautiful picture about who you are and who you get to be through your time at APU and hopefully your time beyond APU. So we are a university that is committed to creating difference makers and he paints this picture using these candles to just describe that as a student you are being lit by different people around you. So whether that's your roommate or your academic advisor or a student affairs leader, you are being poured into as an APU student, so much so that that will pour out of who you are. And that will get to happen in whatever context you enter into after graduation. So in, in your field as a professional, in your personal life, in your relationships, in your church community, um, who, you, who you are and who you are prepared to be as a student at APU will pour out of you. And that is this picture that our president creates during this candela ceremony through this image of these candles. And you have an entire body of people around you who are excited to support you and walk with you through that entire experience. So we are excited <laughs> that you are here. Um, we are super thankful to walk along this journey with you. So again, thanks so much just for being here. Um, next, we are going to transition into a little video about explaining a little bit about financial aid, and then Randall will go into a short presentation for us. So let me pull up this video here to tell us a little bit more about financial aid. So you're thinking about college. That's great. You're taking a powerful step to reach your career goals. In your journey to attend your dream school, you may be feeling like the cost of college is, well, complicated. And maybe your search for financial aid advice has uncovered more questions than answers. We're here to help. At Azusa Pacific University, we believe that paying for college doesn't have to be confusing. Consider us a partner, someone who is here to guide you every step of the way so you can feel confident about paying for college. Here's how it works. Think of this stack of blocks as the total cost to attend college before you receive financial aid. Now, take out the amount you'll receive in scholarships. These are free sums of money based on merit or achievement. We offer scholarships for athletics, honors, transfer students, and more. In fact, at APU, 100% of incoming students receive university aid. That's on top of any government-funded financial aid you receive. Next, apply your grants. Federal grants and APU grants are both given based on financial need, and they're free, so you don't have to pay them back. Finally, you have the option to apply any federal or private loans you plan to take out. Loans are borrowed money that you pay back after you graduate. Once you subtract your scholarships, grants, and loans from the total cost, you'll find that the true yearly cost is a fraction of that original sticker price, putting the cost of college within your reach. Ready to take the next step? Once you've completed your application, go to FAFSA.gov to complete your FAFSA, also known as the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. This is the first step in receiving your personalized financial aid package and finding out your true college cost. Afterward, visit campus to experience the APU community for yourself. Have additional questions? Reach out to our admissions team. We'd love to help you reach your goals. And remember, we are here cheering you on every step of the way. You've got this.
Awesome. Thank you so much, Sarah, for that presentation and that great video. That's honestly one of my favorite I love videos. videos. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it explains so much about financial aid. Um, but I do understand that there's only so much you can really fit in today's event. So if you do have any questions, please feel free to send them in the chat. I see there's a couple hand raises, there's a few questions. Feel free to continue sending them into the Q&A function of of the Zoom, it should be in the bottom of your screen somewhere. Um, again, we do have two admissions counselors answering those questions throughout today's event. And then we will be having two panels in today's event to answer some of those questions vocally with our professors, with our students, and with some of our team members from the student affairs team. But just bridging on top of that video we just saw about financial aid, I'm going to be presenting about paying for college. So what is financial aid? What is scholarships, loans, grants? What are all these different things? I will be presenting a short presentation about that today. But again, please continue to send questions. We'll be able to answer them throughout today's event. So let me go ahead and share my screen and then we'll go ahead and get started. Awesome. So paying for college. So what this presentation is going to focus on is college as an investment. So earlier today, uh, you saw the investment on, or sorry, the return on investment of why you should invest in the college and how to search up that investment and what's the return. Now we're going to look more into what to pay attention to when you're looking at a college in terms of finances, and then some additional information about financial aid, just bridging on top of that video we just saw today. So the big question we have, what are you investing in? Most importantly, your investment in college is not only an investment in your education, but it's an investment in your career and yourself. So first, employability. We spoke a little bit about that earlier today, but APU is ranked in, or was ranked in the 92nd percentile in employability according to The Economist in 2015. We want you to get a job through our industry level professors and being able to network so close to LA and through our amazing internships. Next, the long-term goals. This is where you see your return. So according to College Factual, an APU degree is worth $1.3 million over the course of 30 years. So college is an investment upfront, but in the long term, you will see a return and you're going to skyrocket way past your true cost of attendance in, in regards to that sort of uh, salary graph I mentioned earlier on how we have a higher than average uh, salary over two and six years over the course of, of time, as well as our alumni salaries. So next, let's talk about affordability. Again, we're gonna really dive into that myth buster, really just wanting to drill into the idea that no matter what your income level is, you are eligible for any sort of financial aid at, uh, at APU. And we're really just speaking into that 100%. Again, every student will receive some sort of financial aid as mentioned in the earlier presentation and as, uh, as that video. So 100%, that is going to be the biggest number you're going to see in regards to financial aid at APU. Every student will receive financial aid. So again, remember how I said early to pay attention to these two words? Here's a little demonstration of those things. So you saw a little bit about that in the video, but the sticker price versus the true cost. So the sticker price, like I mentioned, is everything you would have to pay for, but true cost is after applying those, oops, sorry about that, is applying those, um, those scholarships and loans and grants. So like the video mentioned, we were sort of plucking away at that big cube. So really just taking away at the sticker price and then uh, finding out your true cost afterwards. So in regards to the sticker price, that includes things like your tuition, your room and board, university service fee, health insurance, and miscellaneous. Again, these are the different fees before applying your scholarships, loans, and grants. So this is everything in, in a college. So first, uh, here's where you can find financial aid. There are four sources, but next we'll talk about the three different categories of financial aid. So first we have federal aid, which includes the Pell Grant and the SEOG grant, for example, uh, state aid, which is given by the state, such as the Cal Grant, institutional aid, which is given by the college. So for APU, that includes the APU grant and then outside aid, which comes in the form of outside scholarships. So these are the four sources of where you can receive financial aid. Next, we'll talk about the three categories of financial aid. So what is the difference between these three forms of financial aid? So first we have scholarships. The most important thing about scholarships is that these do not need to be paid back. This is quite literally free money just for you. So this includes things such as outside aid, like I mentioned, you're gonna see a few resources on the screen there, such as FastWeb. Um, our scholarships.com, nasfaa.org. 
Uh, these are some example websites that will connect you with some outside resources. My pro tip for outside aid is, especially as juniors and seniors in high school, you are probably most eligible for as much uh, outside scholarships, scholarships as possible, excuse me. But I want you to keep applying throughout high school and even into college. Just because you're in college, that does not mean you're not allowed to apply for scholarships. You can apply for scholarships as a college senior. Uh, my advice is to apply one, two, three times a month because you never know what you might get whether it's $250 here, $500 there, $1,000 there, I really encourage you to take a look at those websites and just be really adamant on applying. Let's, let's set a goal of two scholarships a month. And that way, maybe by the end of the year, you might have received $1,000 in total scholarship or $2,000. Uh, this bracket also includes our AP scholarship. So some departments such as music and CODA and uh, our accounting program, they offer their own scholarships, but this also includes scholarships through um, athletics or through other, other programs on campus like the Mel Scholarship. And then finally, we have our academic scholarship, which I'll talk about in just the next slide, but this is based on your academics. So scholarships is typically based around your academics and your merit or your achievements. So this is really based on your achievements through high school. So especially if you are a current high schooler or even a transfer student, I really encourage you to finish high school strong, really push to maybe volunteer in the weekends, maybe develop some networking opportunities with your teachers or maybe with family friends working in an industry you'd like to work at, really work on um, building a resume and getting gaining experience because this bucket of financial aid scholarship, this is where you can receive rewards for those things that you've done throughout college and throughout high school. So next, a, uh, APU's academic scholarship. This is specific to Azusa Pacific University. These are amazing scholarships and this is just based off of your high school uh, academics. So this includes the Mary Hill Award, which is 10,000 a year, the Director Scholarship, which is $14,000 annually. Dean Scholarship is 17, Provost is 18,000, President Scholarship is $21,000 annually. And that's the key word right there, that's annually. That's not $21,000 broken up into four years. That's $21,000 every year for up to four years up until you receive your bachelor's degree. So we will quite literally pay you for having good grades. So if that's a little bit of incentive to study a little bit more on your next history test that you really don't wanna study for, or maybe your AP calculus class, a few extra points is quite literally um, raise your potential for getting the provost scholarship or the president scholarship. Next, this is also available for transfer students. We offer some of the high scholarships for our transfer students. So if any of you are looking to transfer into APU, these are eligible for you as well. So really encourage you to keep working hard and getting a high GPA and really, really achieving high academic merit because we will reward you with these different scholarships. And then finally, we have our trustee scholarship. So this is the only application-based scholarship. So just looping back into this previous slide, these are completely uh, com uh, automatically applied once you apply to APU. There's no separate application. We'll take a look at this automatically for you. So really wanna encourage you to apply today and just to see what your scholarship might be. And so we can have financial aid meetings and talk about what APU might look like financially. This is automatically reviewed once you apply to APU. Trustee scholarship, this is application-based. So this is typically for students with above a 3.9 GPA or the top 5% of the class. And this is for incoming freshmen. So uh, applications do need to be received by November 15th. So this year we have passed the deadline for the current seniors, but if I have any freshmen, sophomores, uh, juniors in the room, really push to get that high GPA and really do those opportunities like I mentioned earlier, such as volunteering, connecting with your teachers. Um, by around January, February time, 40 finalists are chosen. And then by the end of the year, eight will receive four year full tuition scholarships. So this is an amazing opportunity to help pay off the cost of college. So again, if you are a freshman through sophomore, uh, sorry, freshman through junior high school right now, I really encourage you to study in those final exams. I know we're entering finals week, it's really stressful. I'm about to take a final next week in my grad class. So I just really wanna encourage you to finish strong because this can quite literally get you a couple extra thousand dollars or maybe even a full tuition scholarship at APU. Great, so next let's look at the second bucket of financial aid. This is grants. So again, this is also free money, but instead this is based on your financial need determined by the FAFSA. So again, 
uh, we mentioned the FAFSA earlier in that video. This is the free application for federal student aid. I have another slide that talks a little bit more about that, but in regards to grants, this includes the Pell Grant, which falls under the federal level, the SEOG Grant, the Supplemental Education Opportunity Grant, the Cal Grant, which is supplied by the state of California, and then again, the APU Grant. So these are again sourced by the federal level, the state level, and the institutional level. So here it is, the free application for federal student aid or FAFSA.gov. So really, really, really big highlight on the big word free. This is a 100% free application to determine your financial ability to pay for college. So if someone asks you to pay a fee to fill out the FAFSA or someone is offering you to help pay, uh, complete the FAFSA with a fee, don't do that. This is supposed to be 100% free. Be sure to go to fafsa.gov. Just make sure you are entering in that .gov at the end of the um, URL right there. But on October 1st, the FAFSA becomes available. So be sure to apply as soon as possible. The priority deadline for the FAFSA is on March 2nd, but I really encourage you to complete this as soon as possible. For APU, once we receive your, fi uh, your financial aid information, we'll be able to have uh, financial aid estimate meetings and start talking about what does APU look like financially for you. Uh, we want to make sure you're making an informed decision and just show you, okay, this is line by line, what you could be paying at APU and what you've received, but we need to receive that FAFSA before we're able to do that. So again, this is completely free. You can definitely utilize the IRS tool that's on that, on that page to sort of quickly do your FAFSA. But again, this needs to be done every year. So if you are a current high school senior and you have not done this and you are planning on attending college next year, please do so as soon as possible. And again, this does need to be done every year that you're attending college for the next academic year. In regards to what information it takes, it takes information from last year's tax data. So it can be a bit confusing, but just bear with me. So currently for this next academic school year, if you're planning on attending college in the fall semester, uh, the FAFSA utilizes 2019 tax data. So it utilizes last year's tax data for the next academic school year. So that can be a bit confusing. So if you do have any questions, again, please feel free to send some Q&A questions in the chat. Or if you have some additional questions after today's event, please feel free to email our main admissions email. And then again, we do recognize that there are special circumstances. A lot can change in a year as really highlighted by the um, pandemic. A lot can change economically, such as change in employment status, medical expenses and not covered insurance, change in parent marital status, unusual dependent care, and then elementary secondary tuition. So if there is a situation where maybe your parent lost their job during during the past few months after the tax year that isn't quite reflected on that 2019 tax return, we do offer appeals through our financial aid office. For us, that opens up in January. So um, if there is a special circumstance, definitely email your admissions counselor to do specific and they will get you connected once that opens. But we do recognize that a lot can change in a year. So we wanna make sure we are uh, working our best to make those accommodations and changes. And then finally, we have loans. So this is very different from the scholarships and the grants in the sense that this is money that is borrowed and paid back. So this category, you do have to pay back in interest. So the most important thing about loans is that loans are completely optional. We are not requiring you to take out loans. However, loans are another great way to help pay out the cost of college in case maybe you'd like to defer your payment at a later date. But the next most important thing about this is that this is federal loans. We won't be talking about private loans today. Um, we will mainly be referring you to the federal loans, but this takes information from the FAFSA. So on the screen, you'll see that this includes the direct loan and the PLUS loan. So the main difference between these two is that the direct loan is the student loan. This is, is on the responsibility of the student to pay back versus the PLUS loan. This is the responsibility of the parent to um, pay back. So I'll talk about the direct loan first, but there is a limit as to how much you're able to take out loans from the federal government. So it really depends on your financial ability to pay for college on the FAFSA, but for freshmen, the maximum amount um, if offered is 5,500, and then at sophomores that grows to 6,500, and then juniors and seniors that grows to $7,500. And again, this is federal loans, not private loans. So this is a fixed interest rate. Right now, the current interest rate is 2.75 for student loans. It is at a historical low because uh, the government does recognize the economical impact of COVID-19 during this year. So loans are at a pretty historical low right now. Plus loans are again for the parents. This is application-based and credit-based. So 
This isn't automatically determined once you apply for the FAFSA. Parents, you will need to apply separately for this, but it allows you to take out a loan on behalf of your student's um, cost of attendance for college, and this can be applied for any amount. So this is typically, uh, the number is typically determined by the remaining cost of attendance after applying your student's scholarships and loans. So you can't take out a loan greater than the remaining balance on your uh, student's account for the cost of attendance. So the PLUS loan is a little bit different. The interest rate for the parent PLUS is 5.3%, but again, it is slightly lower in, than past years due to the economical impact of COVID. And again, there's only so much you can really fit about loans in a short presentation, so I really want to encourage you to send a Q&A in the chat. And next, we have some tips and tricks. So uh, first, first one we have is to pay attention to dates. It may sound really silly, but you don't want to submit an important application on the 5th when it was actually due yesterday on the 4th. So really pay attention to the dates and read those, uh, read those instructions. Uh, next is to distinguish between student and parent information. So read closely and determine whose responsibility it is to complete certain parts of your FAFSA. So especially if you are a student, make sure you're filling out your student income and your student information, not your parents' information or vice versa, because that is typically most, the, the most common delay in your FAFSA. So be sure to work through it carefully. It can be a lengthy process, but it will save so much time if you distinguish between those two information uh, and just read carefully. Uh, next, make sure everything is up to date to when you complete the form. So again, this is the second most common thing is that you don't provide up to date information. Once you submit that, just do a little double check, do a little read through and say, yes, this is correct. This is how much my family has made. This number is correct. The numbers can be a bit confusing. I'm not great with numbers, so I need to read the FAFSA like three or four times over. But again, that will save so much more time. So be sure to uh, make sure everything's up to date and read carefully. And then of course, be honest. You don't wanna cause delays in your FAFSA. Uh, we wanna make sure that you're receiving your financial aid as soon as possible. So please be honest. That will really expedite the process for the FAFSA. Um, I recommend after today, if you still have to fill out the FAFSA and you're a current senior, read the instructions carefully and be thorough. Or maybe you're a junior watching the presentation today, read it ahead of time, see what you need to do, get prepared, um, take a note card. I love writing things down in note cards and giving myself a to-do list. Maybe write down some key notes so you know how to be prepared for uh, next year when you have to fill the FAFSA. Because again, it takes information from last year's tax data. So once you complete next year's FAFSA, that'll take information from this year's tax data. And please read the instructions carefully because you don't want to accidentally submit something differently. It's like when you are writing a paper for class and you don't read the instructions. I didn't read the instructions for my syllabus this week and I didn't realize I had a paper due in five days. So I was really not set up for that. But again, I would have saved so much time if I just read the instructions at the beginning of the semester. So please, please, please uh, just be thorough and read carefully. Next, we're going to look at some important dates. So uh, Sarah sort of went a little bit over this, uh, a little bit over this in the previous slide, but just to really reinforce these dates. If you are a senior wanting to go into college next semester and are applying to APU, we have some, uh, some of our deadlines on here. So uh, the next step for seniors is our regular decision deadline. I'm going to jump around a bit, speaking for the seniors first and then jumping towards the juniors. But seniors, if you have not applied yet or if you have not yet completed your application, the first, uh, sorry, the next upcoming deadline is February 15th. That is your regular decision deadline. So please submit your application before then. And again, this is when we determine your academic scholarship. And then once you complete your FAFSA, we can start having financial aid meetings all way before you finish high school so you can make an informed decision. Next, we have the Cal Grant deadline. If you are a California resident, the Cal Grant deadline is the same deadline as the FAFSA priority deadline. That is on March 2nd. So the Cal Grant is only eligible for California residents, but this takes the information from the FAFSA. So please, I really encourage you to fill out the FAFSA as soon as possible. The earlier you apply, you maximize your potential benefits from the FAFSA and really benefit from finding out your financial aid early. That way your spring semester, you don't have to worry about having to put together applications for colleges and you don't have to worry about having to fill out the FAFSA in between um, midterms and in between um, wanting to hang out with friends in your last semester. So please fill that out as soon as possible. And then finally, May 1st, 
this is our deposit deadline. So this essentially uh, locks in your place at APU and lets, uh, lets us know that you want to attend APU. So if you have completed an application and you're still deciding, you do have up until May 1st to submit your deposit. If you do uh, want to submit your deposit and you have been admitted and are a current senior, you can go to apu.edu slash pay online or you can uh, email or text your admissions counselor and they will send you the link. But May 1st is going to be the final most important deadline for the fall semester for current senior students applying to APU. Backtracking a little bit for my uh, freshmen through juniors, we have November 15th, which is our early action deadline. So if you apply before this date, you're guaranteed to hear back from us within two to three weeks on a decision. This is non-binding. So we wanna make sure we are relieving the stress of that spring semester. So I really encourage you to apply before November 15th. I applied for the November 15th deadline when I was a senior in high school. And all I had to do spring semester is just uh, tour different colleges. I just had to look at colleges, decide what I wanted to go to. I could focus on hanging out with my friends in our last year together. I could focus on my finals. Please apply before November 15th. Again, this is non-binding. This is not early decision. This is just early action. So it's just a tool for you to find out early. And again, like that application I mentioned earlier, the trustees full tuition scholarship, November 15th is that deadline for the trustee scholarship. So please apply before then if you are planning on applying for that next uh, uh, next next academic school year. So if you're a senior next year. And then for transfers, we do have some deadlines as well. If you want to come into the spring semester, we do have a spring priority deadline of October 15th, and then a, a spring final deadline of December 1st. Sorry, I have to move the uh, bar out of the way because Zoom is blocking that bottom bar there. But uh, for the fall, if you want to come into the fall, you have that same deadline as um, as prospective freshman students, February 15th, and then a final fall deadline of July 1st. Oops. Great, so here's that UG admissions email. Um, feel free to take a screenshot. Again, if you don't know who your counselor is, feel free to um, email that email. We will connect you with your counselor and we can have one-on-one -on -one meetings and talk about finances. We can talk about APU. We can talk about majors. That's going to be the all-encompassing contact link to get you connected with APU. Awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and awesome. hand my talk to Sarah. Yes. <laughs> Thanks so much, Randall, for telling us a little bit more about that information. Next, we're going to jump into our faculty panel. So we have two panels coming up, one with our faculty and one with some students and our student affairs faculty and staff as well. So for our faculty, if you guys want to jump on screen now, we're going to get, yes, amazing. <laughs> we're going to get kick started here. Just a reminder for all of you, please continue to send questions in our Q&A box. These are why these wonderful faculty and staff members and students are here, is to answer your questions. So Randall is going to go ahead and take it away with our faculty. Awesome. So I'm back again. Hello, everyone. So today we have two very wonderful faculty. Um, uh, faculty members, if you can both introduce yourselves and what department you are um, uh, teaching at. Sure, my name is Dr. Bobby Duke. I'm the Dean of the School of Theology, but I am in my 15th year at APU. Uh, the first 10 years of that was being a full-time undergrad faculty member. Uh, I absolutely loved my time teaching uh, an undergrad. In fact, before this meeting today, I realized that one of the participants uh, that you will hear from later was one of my students two years ago in a first year seminar where we had a service learning project where we partnered with Habitat for Humanity and really reflected on uh, what it means to serve God through our curriculum. And, uh, my name is uh, Greg Michael, and I'm the chair of the Department of Cinematic Arts. I have been at uh, APU now for nine years, and Randall is actually one of my former students and doing a great job, by the way, Randall. And uh, I worked in the entertainment industry for over 20 years, not only as a film director, but also a screenwriter. Definitely. Thank you both so much for, for being here today. Um, and again, we have these two professors from the Theology and Cinematic Arts Department, but they are very much uh, well prepared to speak into any department. So this Q&A is not just for theology and for cinematic arts students, but if you have any questions about um, academic life, if you have any questions about what it's like being in the classroom, feel free to send us chats and we'd love to talk about that. But my first question for today is, um, if you can both just briefly answer, how long have you been at AP? I know you spoke a little bit about 
um, I think I heard Greg nine years. Um, how long have you been at APU, uh, um, Dr. Dr. Duke? And then what attracted you to teach specifically at APU? So as I mentioned, I've been here for 15 years. Uh, the first 10 was uh, full-time teaching. Now, uh, as uh, some faculty say, I've joined the dark side in, in administration. But uh, I actually love seeing APU from both of those uh, angles. Uh, I truly get excited when I see uh, annual reviews of uh, our classes and uh, we have our uh, idea forms and uh, particularly seeing just how, uh, uh, how wonderful our teachers are when it comes to the uh, student experience. But um, uh, over my 15 years, I would say some of the, the highlights for me uh, have been service learning, uh, being able to find ways to integrate service into the classroom. Uh, it's been exciting to uh, be part of uh, in the School of Theology, uh, we have an archaeological dig in northern Israel that we uh, take students to and have had uh, amazing international press from. We uh, discovered a little figurine head uh, that dated back to the time of King Ahab in the Bible. So I uh, quickly uh, got international attention when a journalist said, well, could this be King Ahab from the Bible? Well, we don't really know, but uh, we don't mind having the hundreds of thousands of hits worldwide where APU's name is right there. But we are an amazingly comprehensive university. So in my undergraduate classes over the years, uh, I have students that are nursing, social work, criminal justice, uh, theology, biblical studies, business. And uh, to see all of these students with the same passion to, uh, to serve others through whatever discipline has been powerful. And Randall, can I ask, can I ask you to ask that question again? Yeah, definitely. Uh, so you, you answered how long you've been teaching at AP, but what specifically led you to come and teach at APU? Boy, it's a great question. Uh, you know, let me just uh, I'll, I'll give you a, a deep background answer. I was working professionally on a, uh, on a film set on the back lot of Universal Pictures, and it was a big budget movie, and I was very stressed out. A lot of pressure was on me. A lot of people were watching me. And uh, I noticed a young man standing across the sound stage. And normally I had a cup of coffee in my hand from the morning I, I showed up until I left. And uh, I, I guess this young man noticed that I did not have my cup of coffee. And, uh, and it's really interesting too, because I remember uh, I had just become a Christian not long before this, uh, this event and uh, that I was where I was working. And I just thought, you know, Lord, I, I feel by myself and alone. Is there anyone around who is another Christian that I could speak to? So I remember on this one particular morning, I was standing there, I guess, without my cup of coffee, this young man walked up to me. Uh, and normally when you're a film director, people uh, that are not your, um, your direct peers do not come up and talk to you. Well, this young man was a production assistant he walked up to me, he handed me a cup of coffee, and he said, I just want to let you know that I'm praying for you. And then he walked off. And I, I just thought, A, I thought that was an answer to prayer, um, direct answer to prayer. And then I, uh, I had an opportunity after that, uh, that day to talk to him. And I said, you know, who are you? Where are you from? You know, why are you here? And he said, I, I, he said I'm a, a student at Azusa Pacific University. And uh, I had found out about uh, APU when I was in, in high school, but I really didn't know very much about APU. And so that actually started my, my journey. So when I saw that there was a, uh, an opportunity to teach at APU, I applied. And that's, uh, that's what started me off. Awesome. Thank you both so much for those wonderful answers. There's so much to, to unpack in what you both just said there. I think I'll uh, start off with one piece with what Dr. Duke said earlier about academic service learning. This is going to be a question for, for both of you, but what is so distinct specifically about the APU classroom? So I know, Bobby Duke, you have been in various other um, departments. You're in an administrative position right now. And then Professor Michael, you've also been in classrooms where cinematic arts is very, very hands-on. What is so distinct maybe about your experience in the classroom or maybe even just APU's experience in the classroom? What is distinct about APU's classes? Well, I think uh, what we often will say is that we're uh, training difference makers is so true even down to the classroom level. I think that's why professors choose things like service learning because they want uh, their students to see very clearly what they're learning, say theoretically, actually works itself out very practically in ways to make the community better. Um, a couple years ago, I was asked to speak at the baccalaureate at the end of the academic year. 
And as I was framing what I wanted to speak about, I realized that most students are asked hundreds of times during their uh, college years, what's your major? What's your major? What are you majoring in? I mean, that seems like a pretty standard question from uh, friends, family, and even when you're meeting someone on campus. But I reframed it and I said, you know what? Instead of talking about major, let's talk about ministry. Now, the ministry you have just happens to be named criminal justice. The ministry you have just happens to be named social worker, nursing. Uh, and even as uh, Greg mentioned, having this student that was a, a production assistant on a film lot uh, used that moment getting valuable industry experience, but ministered to him. And uh, I think that really is what uh, I think sets apart the APU classroom is that kind of faith integration component where you're always pushing the students back to say, okay, the so what question. Okay, we're learning something about biological sciences or chemistry or social work, but so what? How is this going to make those around you better? How is this gonna make you and your future employment better? And uh, I can just speak personally that uh, when uh, I have over the years had to go visit friends and family in hospitals here in the Southern California area, or even when uh, my boys who are now 13, five years away from being in one of these events, learning all about coming to APU, um, when they were in the neonatal ICU at Queen of the Valley Hospital here in West Covina, I had three or four APU nursing students that had graduated from APU. And, and I could just tell a difference in the way they interacted with us. And they, they ministered to us as nurses even though they were just teaching us how to do things of taking care of our little ones that were born prematurely. So, I mean, I think that's what really sets apart an APU classroom is this real connection of the head and the heart. Thank you so much, Dr. Duke. And then same question for you, uh, Professor Michael. Uh, what is so distinct about the APU classroom? You're more than welcome to share your own experience with somatic arts, or maybe just what you've seen from other departments as well, or maybe even through your own students, but what is so distinct about APU's classroom? Yeah, it's a great question, and I'll, I'll address this generally from the College of the Arts, but specifically uh, with cinematic arts. So our program is built with an understanding of what it means to work professionally in the entertainment industry. And we have among our faculty, and this is throughout the entire College of the Arts, but also in the cinematic arts uh, uh, department, we have faculty who have worked professionally on significant um, international scope productions. And so what we've done is we're not just trying to give you head knowledge, but this is based on people who actually have succeeded in their field and are trying to understand not only why they do what we do, but, but being able to teach that so that we're preparing our students for actual boots on the ground, um, working successful uh, vocational careers. And so we've structured our uh, entire program on that basis. So you're going to learn not only, you know, what are the fundamentals of storytelling that are going to be applicable to what you're doing when you get out into the, you know, world of filmmaking or television making or, or content production. Um, so we're not only structuring the classes so that you have that foundational understanding, but um, for example, we provide our students with the actual equipment that they're going to be exposed to when they work professionally. Now, as a freshman, you're not going to be working with a, a red weapon camera. You're going to be working with basic equipment. But that same equipment, the DSLRs, you know, uh, uh, professional filmmakers are using and posting their videos or actually exhibiting their, uh, their, their content um, worldwide. So again, it's, it's a systematic process to develop you to the point where when you do graduate, you're ready to step into the real world. The other thing too, is that we offer certification programs, example in, in cinematic arts, where um, you're gonna learn media composer and can actually become media composer for, for those of you who are not familiar with cinematic arts is the uh, industry standard editing software that is used on massive budget Hollywood film productions, for example. Well, you have an opportunity as a freshman and sophomore to become actually uh, professionally certified on that, uh, on that technology. So again, it's trying to incorporate what you're going to find vocationally in the classroom. The other thing, not only do we have world-class faculty that are teaching our classes, but we will have working professionals, people who are currently working on big budget projects, come into the classroom. And th this is one of the great opportunities that we've had during COVID, which really makes us very unique. Uh, we've had, um, for example, the director of Greyhound, which was just released um, uh, on uh, Netflix over the summer, um, or I'm sorry, on, on, on Apple uh, came in and he directed Tom Hanks and he came into one of our classrooms. 
Um, we also had Dean Cundy, who uh, was the cinematographer on Who Framed Roger Rabbit, Jurassic Park, and is now doing The Mandalorian. He came in and, and spoke to all of our students. So again, it's just this constant exposure of people who actually have experience that are, are training our students. Great, thank you so much. I actually just watched Greyhound the, the other day and I didn't even, I didn't even know that they, they came to campus. So that's, that's awesome. Um, I really love what you said about, about the industry and uh, Dr. Duke, you definitely spoke into sort of the ministry aspects as well. But my next question for the both of you, and I'll start with Professor Michael and loop back to Dr. Duke is, can you speak, um, you spoke a lot about the investment, but can you really just speak on that return on investment? So earlier I was presenting about uh, why APU, uh, you are going to get an excellent education. 86% of our students are either getting jobs right after college or are continuing their education. You can either speak into CODA or specifically into your own um, department, but what is the investment with students taking a class at APU? So this is sort of hopping on to what you just mentioned earlier, but for example, the proximity to LA with having these industry leaders come in with these, uh, the, the use of equipment, what is the investment that you've seen with your students? And maybe you can even speak into what's your re reaction with alumni? What's your relationship with alumni and how they have enjoyed their experience at APU? So Professor Michael, I'll start with you first. Yeah, it's really funny that you mentioned the alumni uh, thing because this was just a, a really wonderful, uh, so one of the films that I worked on uh, were actually a couple of films we, we shot in Morocco in, in North Africa. And uh, you know, part of you know sharing the experiences with my students, I actually got an email just two weeks ago from one of the very first students that I had teaching at APU full time, uh, and she uh, wrote an email and she said, "You're never going to believe it. I'm in I'm in Morocco right now at the very studio that you guys filmed your movie, and I'm working on a film myself." And so that was just really you know exciting, you know. So there was just a, a immediate kinship there, you know, not only because she was. A former student, but now she's sharing a similar experience and she just wanted to, you know, and so we're in, in contact with our alumni who are, you know, out, uh, you know, working in the, uh, in, in this case, the movie industry and, uh, you know, keeping in contact, which, which is wonderful. We always love to hear from our, our students, uh, former students, but we also have alumni that are coming back that um, are sitting on panels, you know, how did I get started? What was my experience at APU? How did this prepare me for working in the industry? How did I get at work in the industry? You know, what are certain steps that you can take? Um, so that's certainly, you know, one of those uh, areas. And again, I, you know, just kind of tapping back into the idea. And this is one of the things that makes APU, uh, particularly in my area, unique is that not only do we ask you to, uh, our students to do projects, but we actually provide all the professional gear to enable our students to finish their projects. So we're not saying, hey, we want you to do this and do this and go out and spend more money to, you know, get a camera, get this lighting gear or to, to purchase this software. We actually provide all of that, uh, all that material that you will need to, um, at, at the end of the day, you know, when you're a senior and doing your capstone and even your junior level work, you're, you're producing it on professional grade equipment um, and being instructed again by professionals working in the industry. I don't know, Randall, was that kind of the, the direction you wanted me to, <laughs> that you were so, asking? Yeah, there? yeah, you definitely, you definitely really spoke into, into the uh, investment and just, was, I love that story with the alumni. That's so crazy how she was able to, to reconnect with you and just the, the uh, ability to work in that same studio. But uh, Professor, or sorry, Dr. Duke, I have the same question for you. You spoke a little bit about that sort of uh, ministry investment portion in some of your students, but what is the investment you've seen with, with some of your students and the reaction with alumni? And then uh, just as a notice for everyone, we are coming up towards the end of this section of the panel. So after this, I'll ask uh, one quick question afterwards before we move on. But uh, again, Dr. Duke, just to reiterate the question, what is the investment with uh, students studying at APU? You spoke into the ministry aspect. Uh, I would love for you to uh, push further into that, but especially with any other experiences you've had with alumni or with your other departments. Yeah, I would say that uh, 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 Greg spoke specifically to how various specific fields really prepare their students for that connection to industry. And I would say it's true throughout APU. Uh, if you are in our BSW social work program, you are well prepared to step right into working with say the Department of Children and Family Services. Uh, our pre-med track, we have about an 80% success rate with students getting straight into medical school out of APU. So we do a great job of really, if this is what you're intending to do, we're gonna help you get there. But what we also have is our general education program that broadly uh, connects you to history, 
psychology, Bible, theology, ministry, all of these classes that are part of our general education experience, they really help you be that fully well-rounded person. And I would say that liberal arts focus is something that is uh, very uh, uh, powerful for our students because not always will our students uh, be able to continue in their profession of choice because of various things, but they will have the skill set to adapt to the changing markets that we know are here, will continue to be there, and they will have that ability through uh, their general education experience to also be a well-rounded person that, that I think will have a lifetime of success, even if it isn't 100% connected to what they majored in as an undergrad. Awesome, thank you so much. And I love how you spoke about the general education class that really speaks into the last question I have for both of you today is, um, what are your tips for the students doing today? So. Um, let's say we have a student. I have no idea what I want to study. I'm on the fence between a couple majors. Myself, I actually changed my major three times my freshman year before landing on cinematic arts. So um, what is your, and we're coming up right at the end here, so if you could concise a, a packed answer in just, uh, just a minute or so, but what is your advice for a student that may not know what they want to do and maybe um, how, how should they explore a, APU? So Dr. Duke, I'll start with you because you definitely have that sort of um, perspective of being able to work in so many departments. What should a student do? Yeah. So I uh, was actually speaking with a faculty member last week. We had a Zoom meeting dealing with some uh, some contract issues. It was uh, just a basic meeting, but then we just started talking philosophically. And uh, this faculty just shared with me something I felt so insightful when they said, my goal for students, even at the freshman level, is for them to walk into a classroom and to be both at the same time intellectually courageous so be willing to trust themselves that they are good thinkers, but also to be intellectually humble and to realize they have a whole lot more to learn. And I would say for both parents and students uh, as part of this uh, Zoom meeting, that uh, believe in yourself, believe in your student that they are and will become those difference makers that APU thrives to be, but uh, know that it is a process and we're here to walk with you through that process. Wonderful answer. Thank you so much, Dr. Duke. Professor Michael, what is your advice for students that may not know what they want to do? Or in my case, I changed between a couple of majors before coming to your department. Yeah, you know, it's a, it's a great question. I, a couple of things, you know, take classes in different areas, really expose yourself to different areas and see what you like. Also, APU is about community. Invest yourselves in other students because that's, you're going to hear students say, hey, I took this class and I really loved it and you should take that class. Um, you know, when you're in the College of the Arts, for example, you know, we've got recitals or we've got screenings of our films. Um, our student filmmakers are always looking for other crew members or actors. So participate in the life of the university. The more people that you invest in and the more exposure you get to different areas and different interests, I think that goes a long way in, in helping you, helping inform what you want to do. Wonderful. Well, uh, professors, thank you so much for, for being here today. Again, uh, students, if you do have any questions, please feel free to send them into the chat or um, email our main admissions line. I'm going to hand the mic off to Sarah, who is going to be hosting our next panel for today. Yes. <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah, thanks so much. It was so cool to hear from some of our faculty at APU. Next, I'm gonna have our student affairs panel jump up here on the screen. Dr. Fiala, it's so good to see you. Oh my gosh, Karen Rosley, Bree, and Esther. <laughs> we are so happy, so, so happy that you are here and that we'll get to hear a little bit about student resources in this next panel. So first, I'm just gonna have you guys introduce yourselves. So I'll actually start with our students. So if you guys could introduce yourself first and then we'll transition to introducing our staff as well. Okay, hi everyone. My name is Bree Evely. I am a junior this year at APU. I am from Rancho Cucamonga, California, so just about 30 minutes away. And I am a youth and family ministry major with a double minor in theology and ethnic studies. Hey everybody, my name is Esther and I'm also a junior here at APU. I am from Los Angeles and I'm doing a liberal studies major with a leadership minor. 
And I'm Karen Rugley. I'm the director for mobilization in the Center for Student Action, which is part of our, our spiritual life team here at APU. I myself am an APU alum. I graduated in 2005 with my undergraduate degree here from this fine institution, and I am very excited. Uh, this is my 10th year here as a staff member at APU. And good morning. Thanks everyone for being with us today. My name is Bill Fiala. I am the Dean of Student Wellness here at APU. I've been at APU for 21 years. Uh, 18 of those were as the director of our University Counseling Center providing psychological services to students. And uh, just pleased to welcome you on behalf of the Vision of Student Affairs. We're so glad to spend some time with you this morning. Um, I'm not an APU alum, um, but I do have street cred <laughs> because I married an APU alum. Just want to make sure that we get uh, that in there. Amazing. Yes. <laughs> We'll let you stick around. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for, to all of you for introducing yourselves a little bit. Um, and again, just as a reminder, students or parents who are listening in to send some questions in to our Q&A box so we can answer some specific questions from you. So first, I'd like to hear from our students from a student perspective. Um, for Bree and Esther, can you tell us a little bit about what student resources you have been part of or some resources that you utilize frequently as a student on campus. Yeah. Go ahead, Bree. Great, I could jump in. <laughs> uh, I thinking about this question, it's hard not to talk about every single thing because APU does so well at providing resources for their students to use. Um, but just thinking about the salient things that have been a part of my experience at APU definitely include a lot of the communal, uh, communal organized things that APU does. So whether it be dances, whether it be the alpha program that um, includes students right when they come into APU, whether they were a transfer or a first time freshman, um, being able to be a part of a, a group where uh, you get to meet people from your major and meet someone older than you who gets to facilitate a community. Also that and the Center for Student Action where Karen's here and she's incredible. Just being able to go <laughs> to places and to be on a team and even lead a team at a time for me. Um, being able to meet others who want to live on mission and see what God is doing in other places. Uh, it is incredible. And so I think everything from being able to meet people in your major to meet people who have similar uh, desires and beliefs um, and be supported in that, I think is something that APU has provided for me thus far. And my college experience wouldn't have been the same without that. Mm. A campus resource I'm very thankful for is the Academic Advising Center, just because mm. I, I'm an overthinker. So freshman year, I found myself there like three times a semester, planning out the rest of my four years at APU. And they were able to just like magic fit in a huge liberal studies major and then that leadership minor that I added on, which I'm very thankful for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you both for sharing a little bit about what resources are available to you as a student and the resources that you get to use frequently. Um, next, I will speak to our staff. So Dr. Fiala and sweet Karen, I want to call you Dr. Rugley because plug, Karen Rugley just finished her doctor of ministry. And so I want to call her Dr. Rugley, but she'd probably hate that. So. so close. I'm not even, I'm not quite there, but so close. Thank you. I appreciate it. So close. That. So close. Um, so for the both of you from sort of more of an administrative standpoint, and I think it was um, one of our faculty talked about community on campus. And so that is one of our cornerstones. That's one of our pillars of identity as an institution. So I'd love from your staff and faculty perspective to explain a little bit more about what community looks like in regards to supporting our students at APU. I'll jump in, Sarah. Thanks for that. Um, yeah. And I think that, you know, I'm glad that we've been able to hear from our faculty and from our students before I get to answer this question, because mm -hmm. obviously, as folks on this call have just seen and heard, APU students get to learn from and with amazing professors and fellow students. So uh, I think it's great that you're able to have some exposure to that. But we believe at APU that transformational learning doesn't just happen inside the classroom. 
it happens mm -hmm. outside as well. And, and even virtually in this season, uh, there's still transformation happening. Student Affairs is responsible to make sure that our offices and our staff create those environments and experiences and programs and services that help students thrive um, and develop mm -hmm. as whole people outside of the classroom, right? Mm -hmm. We believe that enhances what they contribute inside of the classroom. Um, and we have a, a great research. Uh, so one of our faculty here, Dr. Lori Schreiner, her whole research uh, agenda is around thriving students, what it takes to make a student thrive. So we try to use that research and use what we know about thriving to help our students to become the best version of themselves, right? That's what mm -hmm. thriving means, to, to become all that God has created them to be. You know, John 10, 10 says, I, I've come that they may have life and have it to the full. We want our students to be experiencing that fullness of life. And so mm -hmm. in student affairs, we do that through what we call our three pillars of student development. I'm gonna to touch on two of them and then I'm gonna turn it over to Karen for the third. The first one is um, student, uh, student engagement, right? Mm -hmm. So we know from research that sense of belonging is one of the primary factors in student persistence and success. So part of what you'd see as a uniqueness of our community is we're really intentional about helping students to find a sense of belonging. Uh, our students mentioned the Alpha program. So this starts as soon as you get mm -hmm. on campus. Uh, you're a part of a small group of students with, with a, a mentor student that's been here a little bit longer. And we're making sure you're getting plugged into community. This happens in residence life. This happens in commuter life. Our campus life offices like activities and intramurals and clubs and organizations. We're very intentional about the structures that we uh, put out there uh, to make sure that students have a sense of belonging. Um, the second pillar in student affairs is what we call holistic wellness. Um, because we believe that optimal well being is critical in order for students to reach their God given per, uh, potential, academic and personal potential, right? Uh, so, this would be those services like our health center, our counseling center, our accessibility and disability resources, our Office of Women's Development. These programs and offices exist again so that students can thrive. We want to make sure that our, our students' experience of community is one in which they can be well and attain optimal wellness, because we know that's gonna help them reach their potential in other ways. The third pillar, which I think is probably the, the core pillar, is the one I, I'd like to turn it over to Karen to talk a little bit about, and that's spiritual life. So Karen, can you take it away? Yeah, thanks so much, Dr. Bill. Um, our third pillar is spiritual life and spiritual formation. We really value a student's spiritual development while they are here at APU. Um, like Dr. Duke said, we, we want to graduate difference makers who are going out into the world with a greater integration of their faith and who they are, who God has created them to be. And so through spiritual life, we do that in a few different ways. We do that through our chapel services. We have a corporate worship office and as a university students get the chance to go to chapel three times a week we offer seven different chapel experiences for students to take part in they're at different times of the day and they have different styles so if a student comes from maybe a different faith development background or faith background we're able to uh, craft an experience for them that maybe fits a little bit more what they're used to, like our liturgical service that takes place on Thursday nights or our evening prayers service. We also offer um, some world-renowned speakers, as well as the world-renowned faculty and staff that we have on our campus who are regularly participating as speakers during those chapel services. The other, um, one of the other parts that we offer for our spiritual formation is our campus ministries office. And in this office, we offer discipleship groups. We know them as D groups on our campus, where students can form small groups that meet throughout the semester that are peer led, that are also led by a faculty to your staff member and ultimately it's a small group for accountability and for spiritual formation. We provide students with a curriculum that they can go through together each semester and oftentimes we have spiritual formation groups, these D groups that meet as freshmen and they continue to meet all the way through until their senior year and we have found that these small intentional groups are really really formative for our students. It's where they're ironing out kind of those those bigger questions in life. They're wrestling with things together in community and through the guidance of our campus ministries office. And last but certainly not least is the office that I am so excited to work with and work for is the Center for Student Action. And our office mobilizes and educates students to do responsible and transformational service locally, nationally, and internationally. And so our office gets students connected to 
community that's going on outside of the APU campus. We do that through service in partnership with Azusa and Los Angeles. We serve in ongoing capacities as well as one-time experiences. We also provide students the chance to participate in short-term service trips. We love to call them action teams on our campus because we're helping our students learn how to put their faith into action. We offer those over Thanksgiving break, spring break, and summer break. And we offer them going to Mexico, to Utah, to various places across the United States and to various places across the globe. Sarah, um, who you're hearing from today, has had the opportunity to go to the Dominican Republic. She's gone to Peru and she and I got to go to Peru together, which was so, so fun. And so I know Brie has been an action team leader as well. And so I, our students really love being able to figure out how to put their faith into action in a context that's outside of maybe our Western community. And so these are the Center for Student Action provides these opportunities for students to find community, not just within their team and who they're kind of developing this experience with, but recognizing that they're a part of a global community as well, which is a really valuable part of our experience here at APU. Yes, that is so good. <laughs> I am literally a product of student affairs and student resources at APU. And I would be so different if I did not have these opportunities that Karen is talking about and that I was able to experience alongside her and because of her and with her. And so thanks so much, Karen, for talking a little bit about those resources. Um, we've got a couple of really cool questions in our Q&A box here um, that I would love for Brie and Esther for you to answer. So a lot of students are wondering about that freshman experience. And Esther, you talked a little bit about academic advising as one of the resources you utilize super frequently in your freshman year at APU. So yeah, tell us a little bit more about your first year experience and maybe specifically about that academic advising piece as you were an incoming student. Yeah, for sure. So I am a first gen student um, because my parents didn't really get to do that college um, at that level. So I was a little bit lost and I didn't really know what direction I wanted to go with college. I did know my major, uh, thankfully, so I had some sort of direction, but I really uh, got into contact with my admissions counselors a lot. Uh, his name was Blake Evans or something like that. And mm -hmm super, super cool about helping me with financial aid and just helping me with the right uh, opportunities to look for at APU. Another thing that helped me a lot my freshman year is reaching out to mentors or connecting with faculty and mm. start building that mentorship relationship just because, um, like I said, I was a little bit lost. I didn't know what I was mm. doing. And even going out to coffee with my professors or just getting to know people at APU that can actually help me was a very great opportunity for me. That's awesome. Thanks for sharing about that, Esther. Bree, I would love to hear too about your, specifically your first year experience at APU and what that looks like for you and how to get students who are getting ready to enter into APU excited about that. Yeah, I'd love to share. Uh, just like Esther, I'm first gen too. So that's amazing. Whoop, whoop. Um, and APU, if there's anything I could say about my freshman year specifically is so many people respond to emails so quickly. I amazing. had no idea that people could respond to emails that quickly in my entire life. And I, if it wasn't an email, it was a phone call. And mm -hmm. I just remember when I was confused, like Esther, there were programs like TRIO, which is our first gen program available, um, reaching out to me via email if I needed anything. But even more so, uh, that reality that those offices are available for everyone. And so just to know like you could walk in and ask questions and they could be answered just as quickly as an email would be sent. Um, thinking about freshman year, I'm even just nostalgic right now because Dr. Duke, one of the panel panelists um, for our faculty panel was my first year seminar teacher or professor. So with our alpha group, so those 10 mm -hmm. students that were in the uh, theology and practical theology school, we all were put in a class together called first year seminar. So that was so cool because the first class I went to at 845 in the morning, which was 
for me, but I'm doing well right here. Um, we, I knew all of the students in that class. I felt so connected immediately and hearing Bill talk about belonging as something, I think I'm processing now. I felt like I belonged at least in that class for the first time, um, knowing all of those students and um, having met them before in at our orientation because you advise with the students in your school and then some of them being in my alpha group and then some of them being in my ever first, like my first class of college. And uh, it was just really cool the way that APU, I can see it intentionally planned, like planted certain things to be connected um, in order to make me feel more comfortable and confident and able to even reach out to other people and say, what classes are you taking or what professors mm-hmm. you had or what, what is an exegetical? How are you writing this? What do you mean 13 pages? Someone help me. Mm-hmm. Being able to reach out to students who I knew and knew me uh, was just integral in my, in my first semester. Mm-hmm. So really cool. That's awesome. So sorry if you can hear. My sister actually graduated from APU in this past May. I know, so exciting. And we're having like a virtual watch party literally on the other side of this wall right here. So if you hear everybody yelling, that's my family from my sweet sister graduating literally from APU, which is so exciting. So our last question that I'll ask for all of you, and again, thanks so much for being part of this event with us today. And I'll start with our faculty and staff because I'd love for you to integrate one additional little extra piece (laughs) as part of this question. Um, But I would love for you to kind of combine these two questions together. Um, But I would love for you to just encourage our incoming students as they are processing this decision, especially in the season that we're in in the world. Um, And as a more administrative side of things, maybe encourage students who don't know how to ask for help or are afraid to ask for help um, or don't even know what resources are available to them. That's a two-part question. How can you encourage students and also maybe specifically for students who aren't necessarily sure how to ask? Karen, we can start with you. Wow, that's such a good question. I was hoping you would start with Dr. Bell so I could think about it. I so sorry. No, that's okay. That's okay. I think first my advice would be to know that you're not alone. I want to normalize your thoughts, your thought process and you know, probably some of the things that you as a prospective student may be wrestling with because I think we're all kind of wrestling with some of those things. We're all mm trying to figure out how to live and recognize that life goes on in the middle of some really challenging times, both in our nation and globally. And so recognizing that you're not alone, I think that sometimes the work of the enemy is to make us feel isolated and to make us feel as though we're the only people in the world who may be feeling these challenges or may be feeling left out or confused and and just know that you have an entire network of people Mm. at APU who are ready and willing to walk this journey with you. Um, We have all seen and been a part of so many of these experiences, not just for our incoming students, our current students, but even for ourselves. We were college students at once too. Mm. You know, I I remember being in Adams Hall, our, my freshman mm. form, and wondering like, did I make the right choice? Is this is this really what God wanted for me? And so, recognizing that you are not alone, that there is an entire community of people who want to provide for you care and to pray with you and to walk this journey as you are figuring out who you are and who God has called you to be. Um, So know that you are not alone in this process and know that it does take a lot of vulnerability to reach out and to ask for help. And we're going to be there. Our desire is to be there when you when you go through this process, when you are there. I um, 
stumbled upon something on my Facebook that said I was doing two years ago, kind of a, a day for each day in Advent. And my day yesterday or my word yesterday was cry. And I remember writing at the time just how poignant and how vulnerable it is to be with each other in those big emotions. And sometimes I think we're taught that those big emotions are a sign of weakness. And mm. honestly, that's just not true. Jesus wept. And so how, how can you remember that there is an entire team of people and a university and institution that is ready and willing to come alongside you as you are exploring these bigger things in life, as you are exploring what it means to be in college, but who God is forming you to be in college. These times in this season is gonna be so formative for you. And so we have an open door policy for a reason. We mm. want you to walk through that door and know that there's gonna be someone there to celebrate life's biggest accomplishments with you and to hand you a tissue when you need one. So know that you are not alone and that we are here to, to walk this journey with you. Amazing. Thank you so much, Karen. And I have felt that as a previous student on campus. So thanks for sharing that. Um, yeah, Dr. Bell, can you? Sure. So now, now you know why when you let Karen go first, I'm thinking to myself, <laughs> oh no, I've got to follow Karen. Okay, how am That's I going to do this? Because what I love about Karen, is she is so passionate uh, about the work she does here with us yeah. uh, at APU. And, and you just, you can see that when you see her. And I would say to, to prospective students, you wanna be at a university where you see a lot of Karens, right? Where yeah, you see where you see folks who are passionate about what they do. They're passionate about wanting to, to invest in students. We want you to get a degree, right? That's the punchline. Sure. But we also want you to know that we are invested in who you become. We want you to know that we are invested in your identity, in your character, right? You want to be at a university where you, where you feel like people are invested in who you are. Um, at APU, I think the distinctive is that we're invested in who you are, but we're also invested in whose you are. And we mm -hmm. want to see you become more um, embracing of your own faith. Um, uh, there's great stuff that you've learned uh, throughout the course of your life till now. And college is where that all comes together and you make it your own. And we are so excited to walk alongside you in that process. That's why we do what we do. Uh, mm -hmm. One thing I'll say is that, that staff and faculty can sometimes feel like they're a little bit uh, intimidating or, or maybe mm -hmm. unapproachable. That's not true, um, but it can feel like that. So the other thing that I'll say is when I was the director of the University Counseling Center, the majority of our referrals didn't come from faculty and staff. They came from mm -hmm. other students. So getting connected in community and caring for one another, there's always somebody who's gonna be available, right? Whether that's a staff member, whether it's that faculty person. And again, faculty are great. They're waiting in their office hours. The most disappointing thing hmm. for faculty members when they have office hours and nobody comes. They yeah. want to be there. They want to have that connection with you. So I would say, don't ever be afraid to approach a staff or faculty member, but also don't be afraid to let fellow students know, hey, struggling mm. with this or, hey, I'm not sure what to do about that. And those, those are some of the best referrals that happen because students help students. So I would mm. just maybe add that to, to what Karen said. And again, um, just excited for the opportunity for uh, all of you on this call. Uh, find a place that fits for you um, and find a place where you feel like you're invested in your whole self would be my advice. Mm. Thanks, Sarah. Amazing. Yes. Thank all four of you so much for taking some time just to provide resources, right, for our incoming students. And you all are living proof of what APU is and does and stands for. And so thank you so much for advocating for that and letting us know a little bit more about who the four of you are as well. Um, I think that our students and parents who are watching really appreciate that. So thank you so much to our student affairs and student panel. Thank you so much for just giving us some insight into who you are. Um, I'm going to invite Randall back up on screen here. Thank you so much to all of you. Um, and we are going to close out our event. So thanks so much for spending some time with us on your Saturday. Um, we are going to have some incredible resources pop into our chat here. So you can attend some more virtual events. We've got a virtual tour that you can attend to experience what campus looks like, to see students walking around, to see some more resources. Um, we're gonna drop in 
some other resources for you to connect with us as an admission staff. So you can get any questions that you might have answered in the future. Um, but again, thank you so much to all of you for attending. Randall, you are an awesome teammate in this event. <laughs> I loved being able so to do this with you. <laughs> yeah, you did a great job, well, Sarah. Thank you so much. We just sent those, those links in the chat, so be sure to save them before we end today's event. But thank you all so much for coming today, and hopefully we can reconnect with you all again soon. Absolutely. We're excited to see you all. Bye. Thank you. Bye, everyone.